And we're rolling. Yes, you are now listening to Outside the Box, the portable podcast that goes directly to the source of the illest human beings in the galaxy. I'm your host, Awkwards. And today we are in Stockton, California, the first podcast we've ever done in Stockton, California so far. And what a crazy one to kick it off. We're about to hit another milestone, man. I'm excited. Like, since I started this podcast, this is like one of the main episodes that I really, really wanted to do. And just eight episodes happening, and it's finally here, and we're doing this. So let's just get down to business, man. We got a very special co-pilot with us today, and we're not going to waste no more time. I'd like to welcome to the show, man, a true Stockton king, one of the most absolute greatest fighters of all fucking time. It's going down. Please, Stockton, slap your hands together at home for the man himself, Mr. I'm Not Surprised Motherfucker, Nate Diaz. What's good with you, man? How you doing, bro? I'm good. What up? Thank kind of long table here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, we appreciate you uh, being here today, man. Big shouts to the homie Chris for helping me facilitate this whole thing, man. Much love, of course. We just interviewed you on... Uh, K wins on the radar show. This is kind of like the non-filtered version where we could say fuck and shit and have a, have a little bit more good of fuck a time. Fuck shit ass cut. Yes, Should there we go, man. Up. So we have you on the show, We're man. Live. Hey, <laughs> so how's every, how's life been treating you lately, Nate? Everything good? Yeah, it's cool, man. Just training, uh, kicking back, cruising around, doing my thing. That's what's up. That's what's up, man. What have you been working on recently? Just in life in general. Just uh, training, a uh, whole bunch of different stuff. That's okay. what's up. That's what's up, man. Cool. Stuff coming. Yeah. Well, I seen you was uh, I seen you was at that uh, Conor McGregor and uh, Mayweather fight, man. Did you enjoy yourself over there? Yeah, we're out there. Uh, fight is cool. Yeah, it's fun up there. Yeah. I'm concentrating on my live. <laughs> we live. My live we live. Day, it's Weezy here, man. Check it out. Okay. Yeah, that's what's up. We live on here, man. It's not the first time, man. Well, what did you think about the fight? Was it cool? The fight went went how I how I imagined it would go. Pretty much how we all yeah, thought yeah, it would yeah. go, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so it's cool. Yeah, I went to check it out. Fight fight week. Gotta go check those out. Oh, definitely, man. I seen you was hanging out with Mayweather too, man. He a cool cat to kick it with or what? Yeah, he's cool, man. He's the OG too, you know, he's older older in the game and uh he knows the business, he knows the fight game and uh Yeah, he's definitely he's embraced you. Love. He's yeah. definitely embraced you since uh you know, after tapping out the Irishman, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's good to get that that honor, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, have you thought about doing any boxing yourself or what? Like just like like professional? Yeah, boxing? I've been locked in contracts, but uh, I try to fight. I try to box before they didn't let me. They didn't let me. That's their guy. Connor's their guy, so they they, mm. they protect like, him. Huh? Yeah, and they just give them what they they want to do with him, and they, they build who they they want to build. And I'm not one of them. <laughs> but it's all good now. I'll build myself. Man, that's how, that's how they usually treat people from Stockton, man, yeah. when we get into stuff like that. They don't want to see us shine. We got the talent to beat the best in the world. For some reason, they're just not trying to push like the golden boy that they have. You know what I mean? It's it's pretty lame, man. But I'd love to see you box, man. I, I like how... Like with your insane cardio, man, like you, you probably you think you'd adapt to the 12 rounds real good, probably, right? You... Yeah, that would have never happened to me what happened to Connor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, he essentially making the same mistakes that he made against you, just gassing out. Yeah, and the blueprint know? was the same way. The, yeah. The, the, the victory was my blueprint. Yeah, so. for sure, man. And I, I even heard that, like, somebody was, like, some boxing promotions was, like, trying to buy you out of your contract. Was that Yeah, a lot, a lot, uh, uh, years ago, actually. Yeah, is that something yeah, you'd be interested in? That's what in? I'm saying. Like, yeah. they, they promote him as the money guy, That's and, and he became bigger than, than everybody because that's – what they promoted him as. Yeah, yeah. They were no, like, exactly. You know what I'm saying? I was the I was the guy bringing all the views and bringing all the numbers. They didn't announce it as that. So that's why when they were going to buy out my contracts, they're like, are you kidding me? This is our guy. We just don't <laughs> want to tell nobody this is our guy or why because yeah. then his value goes up and then we he gets what he wants. And we don't want to give him what he wants. We want to give the little Irish dude what he wants. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> that seems how how it always is, man. All the guys that are, you know, on the covers of the games get beat up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it is what it is, man. Yeah. It sucks, but, you know, I'm sure they'll they'll figure something the way, out, man. The way it is that people don't understand is, like, uh, like me and my brother, we're already – so they don't use us to promote us. We're, we're, we got the – we're the best fighters in the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, – and, uh, 
that uh, they they don't want to promote us because they already had Randy Couture and Chuck Liddell and Dan Henderson there and T. Ortiz. They already have America. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't need to promote Americans. They got America. Yeah. They don't need. They they already got Canada with George St. Pierre. They already got South America with um, Anderson Silva. So they got this all on lock. You know what I'm saying? Global takeover. They need Europe. <laughs> yep. And then they got a little album of Conor boy. McGregor. So we're like, we'll use him. And then everybody, so all this, it's propaganda. You know, it's all blown way out of proportion. And uh, it's fine, though. That's cool that he's getting blown out of proportion. But where's ours? Oh, they already used it all. They, yeah. they already got America, so they don't they don't need us. So it's like, all right, well if you don't let if you don't need us and let me let me be on my way. But you gotta even let me be on my way, so we're living in prison. Yeah. You know, as far as their career goes. Man, well we're gonna see fight soon, hopefully, man. I mean, I noticed that you guys uh, just opened up the Nick Diaz Academy here in Stockton, man. How's that mm-hmm. been going for you guys? It's been going real good, man. It's uh overloaded, overpacked on uh, overpacked in classes and uh we're about to have to, we're outgrowing our spot already, you know, been yeah. there probably six, eight months. And uh, we were in Lodi for a while, but when we moved to Stockton, Lodi came with us. And uh, we were in Stockton initially, then Lodi, then Stockton. We've been all over the place because leases are, we've been broke our whole whole careers. And uh, I mean, I mean, as far as buying a building and stuff. But, yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, so the lease is always up. Three years we're out, three years we're out. And now uh, we were looking to buy, but... Uh, but um, nothing's for sale. Nothing was for sale. De- yeah, yeah, decent. So we got a good spot on Pacific. Uh, no, it is perfect. It's, yeah, it's great. It's right there on the main street, and dude, people are pouring in, and uh, it just makes for a better environment. Everybody's happy there. Oh, people yeah. come in, and have a good time. Training's fun. You the teach kids, up there too. The kids' class. Yeah, I te- teach from time to time. I got I got a good legit world champion, uh, black belt Randy Spence teaching the classes there, yeah, and. Uh, me and my brother will stop in and, and teach, but I'm mainly in there to train and 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 work out and hang out. I'm more of a, uh, I'm more of a, uh, I'm more of a like a uh, training partner and and uh, you don't keep me in charge because me in charge is like, you know what I'm saying? We yeah, need a yeah, boss yeah. in there. I'm a, I'm in there. I'm in there to play and have fun. I'm bad. I'm bad for business. I make fun of people. People make fun of me. We end up having that. We've been been having mat, full on matches. I'm like, we're getting down in here, but uh, it's all good and fun out there. The, the the Stockton environment is great, man. The kids' class is just the kids' class is crazy, dude. You yeah, know? that's what like, I love, man. I, because like. You know, you're looked at as this badass motherfucker, mm. but at the end of the day, man, I think that you really do have a lot of elements for like a great role model where you're teaching yeah. kids, and I really, I really love to see that. Well, at the end of the day, it's like I went in when I was a kid. Yep. And then uh, I, I, I spent my whole last 17 years in there, so I'm basically one of the kids, just older. <laughs> <laughs> so real. it's all good. So we get in there, and I'm more immature than the kids most of the time. But huh. <laughs> well, we got to get man. serious. We'll get serious. But it's always all good in there. So it's cool. That's what's up? It's good <laughs> just to see you know having it right there in Stockton and everything too, man. Like you've obviously had a really big impact on the city of Stockton, man. You want to tell us a little bit, like you know how people feel when they come up to you and stuff like that. Like this is a big deal, man. Because you know I feel like when you guys have a fight. And you guys, you know, are killing it. I feel like just the overall aura of the city, like people are just a little happier. You know what I mean? It gives them something to look forward to. Like when we was at the um, at the uh, victory party for the Connor fight, like just there was no drama. Everyone was just. Were you happy. there? Were you there? I the think that was, I was crazy. There. I was there, man. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. crazy. Yeah, man. How do you feel about your impact on Stockton, man? It's, it's a beautiful thing, man. It's cool, man. My brother started the whole thing too. You know, he he came out and he was like. Stop! Don't represent. We're, hmm. we're not like these other guys, man. People didn't like us. They didn't like it. So ain't like that. And then and then and then uh, it, it goes full circle though, because we go into it hardcore and it comes back positive. So it's kind of yeah. cool, you know. It, it's um, it ain't got to be like that. We ain't got to be all hardcore. It's all good when it comes to, when it's all said and done. This one became a career. Yeah, you go out there and you fight. You do your thing, and it's an angry situation, and you get. But when it's all done and over with, you come back and you're like, "I made it out alive." Let's all <laughs> hang out, and be cool, everybody. You, you know, it. so everybody, it's a real positive. Uh, 
even when you lose, you're back here and everybody's showing love. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. It, it feels good to, to uh, get love from the hometown. And anywhere, actually, but hometown especially, uh, people are, will come up to me. They're like, you get sick of this? You must get sick of this. They're like, yeah, come on, man. Wait, you wouldn't get sick of people showing you love in your hometown? It's all real. gravy. I could dig it. I, I'll get sick of it in Vegas. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I've had enough of you people. <laughs> so it's overwhelming. Vegas is like uh, Hollywood for MMA especially. Yeah, I can and see it, and, and people are aggressive, and uh, and you can do it for so long, but after many, you're like, all right, I'm had enough of people. Hmm. Get away from me. Quit hmm. touching me. You know, because people start grabbing and they're all yeah. drinking out there. But you come home and there's people show you love and people are like, oh, you must get sick of that. I'm like, come on, man. Hell no, nah, man. I mean, you're definitely. Poor me, huh? Yeah, poor <laughs> yeah. me. Like fucking hometown love. I appreciate that. It's all gravy. Nah, you're definitely a sign of hope to a lot of people out here, man. So it's a beautiful thing, man. I mean, aside from that recent stuff, man, uh, you got any plans of doing a fight anytime soon? Or At the moment, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not logged into anything or talking about anything, but um, I'm sure that I, I have some ideas for this year. Yeah, so, that's what's up, man. So when they... it's time to pull the trigger, oh yeah, if I can tell them what's going down, I'll, I'll bust it out. But but I want to see how this fight this weekend go and yeah. see how some stuff goes. But uh, that's a, that's the thing. There's a lot of fighters. That, over here, they're bad mouthing me too. The fighters are like, "He ain't no fighter. He ain't no fighter." I'm like, I already fought more than everybody in the UFC. Yeah. Everyone in the UFC, aside from Randy Couture, Tito Ortiz, BJ Penn, and Michael Bisping, has actually done a lot. I have more fights than anyone on the roster Damn. in the whole roster. Damn. That from activity from from you got a from majority 21 of the... to 30 years old, and I've been slow the last few years, just chilling, like fighting once a year. And you got and, some big awards too. Oh uh, yeah, and I have the most uh, of the night awards, the most mm -hmm. submission of the nights. Mm -hmm. I see that I'm holding all the numbers. I'm the one who did all this yeah. stuff, and I, the fighters are like, "He, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, he." They'll say he's not a fighter. He don't even fight. He don't even fight because I haven't been that active these last four years. I'm like, hold up. I'm not fighting because I am a fighter. You're <laughs> fighting because someone's telling you to fight. Hmm. I'll fight whenever the fuck I want to fight. That's because I'm a G, nigga. I'm a fighter myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I ain't trying to do what nobody says. I'll do what I say. And I will fight when I am, when I am uh, approached respectively. <laughs> yeah, yo, yeah. Nate, will you please? Y'all show up with that situation. Will you please fight? Because it's. Things change when you don't need to fight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I've already been fighting too long. I'm like, man, I don't need to fight nobody. I'll fight anybody. Yeah, but I don't do need to fight want. anybody. You know that? And the fighters are like, he's not a fighter. I'm like, sound like you're being manipulated into trying to manipulate me into getting into the fight. I'm like, guess what? You work for somebody. I work for me. Yeah. So Who's the fighter now, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> So that's the name of the game right now. And my brother is the same thing with him, too. It's yeah. like we put in our work. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? If something and, I'll right put in, up, and I'll put in more work. But as nicely, motchafuckers. Yeah, if something right. Nicely, something all right. Of, I'm talking about the organization, the fighters. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm making, making a big deal because I'm not trying to just sign a, a contract just because it's a good idea for you guys. Yeah, yeah. They're you not the one out there that has to punch and everything, you know? Fuck that. Can I like this thing? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we could. We might get in trouble. But I don't know. Who's the boss? I personally, we got a pen up here. I don't even, I personally don't even give a shit. <laughs> but I, I don't know. <laughs> we just started the radio show. We might get kicked out. But fuck it. Where would Nate Diaz, man? Are you guys going to get kicked out of your podcast? I don't do that. <laughs> Are we allowed to smoke this or no? Nah. We'll do it next time. We'll right. do it after. That's fair. That's we'll fair. We'll do it after. That's fair. That's fair. Afterwards, people. So, uh... I want you to get kicked out the podcast. <laughs> well, I can't get kicked out the podcast, but we just started the radio show like two weeks ago. Yeah. So I don't know if they're going to fuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> We'll have 104 Classic Rocks in here tripping yeah. on like, We like Classic Rock too, man. Come on. Tom Petty, that's yeah. sad about yeah, him. You nah, want to smoke this is, with us? Yeah, Rest in peace, Tom Petty, <laughs> that's man. That's fucked up. Yeah, no, the Hawk Petty. definitely fucks with it. Hey, him, I just saw Tom Petty in Sacramento. Damn. When he right passed before. away a month later, yeah. Wow. That badass concert too is real wow, cool. Wow, that's crazy, man. Lucky you got to see that, especially at the time, man. And I saw him at Bottle Rock in Napa about a year, last year or something. Did you guys remember that? Napa yeah, Bottle nah, Rock? I didn't, I didn't go, but yeah, I've been hearing about him coming around. It was before. cooler in Sac, though, because we were way out there at Bottle Rock. We were right, right there. Oh, yeah. That. That's what's up, man. Dope. So well, that was uh, cool. 
Yeah, I mean, I've been seeing you've been going to a lot of shows lately, man. I follow you on social media, obviously, and uh, you know, I've seen you've been going to a lot of different shows. Like, what kind of um, music do you like out of everything? We all know you like Tupac. Dude, we I know like, you fuck with Tupac. I like everything, like big, wide variety of music. Like it goes on and on. I live on music, so that's what's up. We know you fuck with hip hop, right? To it. yeah, for sure. Always hip hop, but I'm I'm messed with rock, hard rock, classic rock, punk rock. Old school, everything. I'm uh, got the widest variety of music, probably. Hmm. That's what's up. What uh, what rappers do you like to listen to, just in general? Doesn't have to be new or anything, just in general. Dude, but I like Tupac, Eminem, obviously. Um, let's go off somebody we, we, you won't really hear about. Uh, I like uh, Mystical, All No Limit Records, All uh, What, All Cash Money, All mm-hmm. Lil Wayne. Uh, I seen you Give shout out Brother all. Lynch a few Brother times. Brother Lynch too. hung is grow up on the E40. I oh, grow yeah. up on that stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? I go off for days. I'm like, where do I start with music? Hmm. Music is what I dude. Music it shows you the ways. That's what's <laughs> up. That's what's up. Well, hey, I think this is gonna be the first time ever on this podcast that we have a fucking gift, man. I was told. I know that you fuck with Brother Lynch. Brother what? Lynch and Ren from Doja Click have an album together. Yeah, that's what I'm talking. And about. I wanted to shoot it to you so you can fuck with that, man. Enjoy. Out. They even let a motherfucker like me on one track on there too. So well, it's cool, you're on man. This. Huh? You're on this. Yeah, thing. yeah, I'm on there, man. Oh, on the track yeah. called Breaking Bad with Mac Mall, man. It's All crazy. Right, how do we do this? Let it's crazy, see. man. It's a, it's a great album, dude. Uh, and I know you fuck with the Deftones and stuff too. What other Deftones, rock stuff do you like, yeah. man? Deftones, dude. Don't get me started with music. Okay, Deftones, Tool, fucking uh, Perfect Circle. No, I like the P- Pussifer a lot too. Perfect Circle is cool. Okay. Um, System of a Down. Blink one eighty two. See varieties. They're all completely different, but I That's like good. I like everything. Um, shit, old shit. Some forty one. I don't know. I get heat and love for all the music I talk about too. They're like, I hey. thought you like this. I'm like, no, nah, I like everything. Hey, you gotta listen to old what you school. like. You know what I mean? Angel baby, old school memory. <laughs> <laughs> Low rider oldies. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Every kind of music. Roller roller skate. See, this music. is the type of stuff we like to do. I'm sure most of your interviews, everyone is like, "What was going through your mind at the exact second you had the triangle choke or something yeah. like that?" Like, we we want to talk about music. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, good shit. <laughs> That's what's up, man. But I think one thing that everybody wants to know, man, is um, is there any kind of update on a third fight with Connor? Is that is that going down? Hey, man, time will tell. You know, I don't I don't know right now. Yeah. Um, there's talk. They call me. They call me. We talk. We talk about things. But mm-hmm. I think what's happening is they want me to ask and beg. I'm like, I don't need nothing. <laughs> you from don't need nobody. To. I don't need nothing from anybody. There we go. I was trying to get this. To there you go. Out. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Premeditated. Dope album. Make sure you copy it. I have been talking about it on the podcast. Definitely, man. So, I mean, is it something that you're personally interested in, too? The, if, the, the Connor fight, the um, the third fight, if they approach you with the right situation and give you a, some respect? Um, uh, I'm interested in, in, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, yeah, a big fight, a big show is great. Uh, and, um. If not that, I have other plans too. Yeah, I mean, you know you're down to fight. I'm not stressed off of it, but uh, the the social media and the people are making it like I'm stre- sweating it. But you should see me daily. I'm yeah, you're not a, stressed. Smoke a joint, go not for a run. Stressing. Go to the gym not and train, stressing. laugh at the gym, <laughs> and then uh, and all of a sudden on social media, Nathan's waiting for the. Like I'm not waiting for anything, <laughs> but I will do anything if, it happens, if it we happens, have happens, the right yeah. talk, if we have the right conversations, and and get a good. But uh, I'm gonna watch these fights. You know what's happening is that 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 Jorge Masvidal is fighting mm. this weekend mm. against um some dude. Anyways, <laughs> he's fighting, and he just fought Damian Maya a little mm. while back, and he whipped. He's he he lost the fight, mm. but when you watch the fight, he he did all the good stuff. The other guy was just holding on and trying to trying to wait him out, and uh, he did a good job. And I think he's the best fighter, one of the best fighters besides me and my team in the UFC. Yeah, and he's complete, and he's a real fighter, and he's completely underpromoted. And that's one of the fights this weekend. That's the biggest deal, and they're not making too big of a deal out of it. I'm like, forget all these other fights. That's the one. It's like right they there. just want these characters, huh? dude. Yeah, I'm like, uh, I like real fighters in the real fight, and it's like, dude, if 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 
That's legacy talk. You yeah. Fight a real fighter if you're gonna. I agree. I know they're the type of fighters that I'm looking at. I'm not trying to fight. Uh, the the pretty boy white boy because they want me to. Mm-hmm. Because no, how about I find somebody like me and we promote each other off of a real fight and show you what real fighting is all idea. about. Because uh, I'm not trying to play around anymore and do do. I mastered my own craft, dude. The the, the my last couple of fights, five four fights, I think, and mm. uh, everything. I did all that. I was like, we're gonna do this, this, and this, and I made all this stuff happen. And there's no love or no promotion that I did any of that by myself. And uh, and uh, that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, dude, you guys are not pro- you're not promoting anybody. They're promoting their one guy, their couple guys, mm-hmm. and I, and I wonder why they're having problems. I know how, I know what they're doing though. I know they they're fooling everybody. They ain't fooling me. <laughs> Man, I could get deep about it. That's out of everybody's league. They're like, what the hell is he talking about? But I'm like, dude, <laughs> when, how about you guys let me do my shit and I'll tell you when I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing any fighting because that's a great idea, man. Hey, I mean, speaking of doing your shit. What like, is your what is your uh, uh, your Instagram? Is oh, it's o just or O K W E R D Z two zero nine. It's a common thing, man. I have a really hard Awkward to spell weird right there, ass man. name. I was just putting the A. I was like, what the fuck? Cause I never followed you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not nah, for sure, man. Um, you know, uh, what does it feel like to like fight in front of that many people, man? To have all those people watching you fight? Because when I fight somebody, like I don't want anyone to see it. <laughs> like, <what>? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Me too. I don't want nobody to watch that, man. Like, how does it feel before you walk out there, man? Knowing you're on pay per view and like, there's all these thousands of people out there. Like, it's a lot of pressure, man. Um, the fighting is crazy, dude. It <laughs> is. Um, it's not fun. <laughs> it is uh, something I I just got. That I just kind of just got stuck in, dude. <laughs> How'd yeah. you get stuck in it? I started and I couldn't stop. <laughs> Heard the question you asked me, like, what's next? I'm like, fuck, man. I'm, well, <laughs> next was dinner. <laughs> and then I was going to try to maybe fucking get a workout in and then go home. And then, oh, shit, I got to fight, huh? I got to fight. It's, the, man, it's the question of the day, though. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's I something agree. you can't escape. It's mm-hmm. something you can't escape. And I'm not... I'm not. I've accepted that. That's cool. But it's just like it's a it's a crazy thing. Fighting is crazy though. You gotta fight. You gotta go in there. You gotta fight. You gotta train. You gotta not get your ass whooped in front of the world. Mm. And it's <laughs> that simple. Man, <laughs> that sounds terrifying, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds absolutely terrifying. I mean, but I'll do it though. I ain't gonna do no nine to five. That's for sure. I agree with that. <laughs> Fuck that, man. Hey, when you um. Towards the end of that first Conor fight, when he just kind of lunged at you at the very end, did you kind of just know in your head that it was a wrap for this dude? Like, yeah. Like, what was he? When he shot him, I mean, that happens to me in fights a lot. Uh, I start teeing off on him and they shoot and they get choked. And I'm like, oh, I got choked. And it's like, you shot choked on purpose. It was the easy way out. You don't want to yeah, get hit yeah. anymore. Yeah. I wish if I could do it all again, I would have just kept in his ass because all the backlash I got. And all the all this Nate jujitsu was better. I'm like, no, you got knocked out. He did. You he got was... knocked out, but he kind of you did shot. Yeah. It was a way. It was a way out. It was a quitting. It's give up. It's like, mm-hmm. oh shit. Yeah, yeah, he was rocked. He did what he could once he did that. Oh, maybe I don't want to get out when we're on the ground. A couple of things happened, but but that was a knockout. You know what I'm saying? He got stunned. Well, what, what, what? he's gonna start eating them. That happens to me in fights. They shoot, and he talks about it too. So he knows what I'm talking about. He talks about how he does it to fighters. They shoot. They turn to wrestler. That's what happened to him. We get a wrestler. And then and Mayweather and him were selling this big old thing. And it's like He wins all his fights on stand-up. Mm-hmm. Only time he lost was on the ground. I'm like, dude, you guys know what happened. Mm-hmm. He got knocked out, but he shot. And, and that, you know why? Because choking out hurts a lot less than getting knocked out. <laughs> you could simply, yeah. oh, he, ch- he caught me slipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, no, I, I caught you slipping with my fist. And then... Yeah, and wrestling's not even really. So like he shot it with a rap. Oh, they oh, it's, I could I could feel when he shot it with a desperate shot. Like, oh shit, I'm getting my ass whipped. And he shot and I, and I put the choke in. And he's like, wait, maybe I'm not gonna quit. And then he was like up and down the whole time. I could tell you right now, like you better take me clean out <laughs> because, man, yeah, uh, I've already accepted that from the beginning. Man, 
And after you tapped 18. him out. <laughs> I think, I'm like, all right. Because I got people to go home to. I got yeah. I got homeboys. I got, you know what I'm saying? Chris going to make fun of me if I come home and, <laughs> man, you quit. Some people don't hold their mouths, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. I don't want to deal with all that. All of a sudden, oh, why didn't Nate move? I ain't moving. <laughs> My mom lets you. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> That's what's up. I mean, <laughs> after you tapped that fool out, man, how did your life change, man? Like, it was like, like I don't watch sports, but I watch y'all fights. And that moment for me, I had like a legit sports freak out moment. That was crazy. Like, what, what, how did that feel, man, afterwards? Like, how did your life change? It, uh, it was, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, it was just, it was, it was crazy because I didn't know how big of a uh, impact. I I thought it was just like him a man like where I knew who yeah, yeah. he was and he's gonna most love. But, huge man. But I was like, I was like, what the fuck? I'm glad I said what I said after I lost, after yeah. I won. I like I'm not surprised because mm -hmm. because the whole time when everybody's been pumping this dude up, I thought everybody saw what I saw. I'm like, this is some bullshit. This guy's the best guy in the world, and he's like, whoa, whoa. and he got on the stage and he started punking everybody at that one press conference. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you're all a bunch of pussies because every fighter up there. I'm like, you wouldn't have done that if I was up there. Yeah, he would. Somebody walks in the room, he's like, hey, I'm the fucking man here. Fuck you and you, and then and then we laugh at him for saying something to a couple guys. We're all pussies too for just letting some dude walk yeah. up in here. That ain't gonna happen to me ever. Yeah, you know, that, what I'm that's saying? one of the things about Connor too is like that was a di big difference when he fought you is he's always in everybody. His head, and he seems like he really shakes a lot of people. But it seemed when he came across you, it just like psh, just cut all of that, and it, it feels like it affected him a lot in a way that he wasn't able to do that. Yeah. It, it, you feel like you were actually in his head as opposed to him trying to do it. Yeah, to you. probably. He was like, "What?" Yeah, I think it sounds I, corny, but he could be the hammer, but can't be the nail. Is that what it had to say? <laughs> but for real, I was like, "What the fuck?" I don't care what nobody says. Uh, because if I if we're right close enough, I'm gonna get your ass for one. Mm -hmm. For two, if you say whatever that hurts my feelings, <laughs> we're still gonna fight, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it doesn't change because yeah, I'm yeah. still gonna You're put on the same matter. ass whipping that I'm gonna put on mm -hmm. whether I'm whether I'm butt hurt or not. Because huh. you know what I'm saying, I got thick skin anyway. I'm like huh. hurt my feelings, I'll get you somewhere or another. For real. <laughs> my mom's watching. I'm hearing my feelings. <laughs> my mom watching. That's hey, what's man. up. Man, it gets me like that. I've been seeing I've been seeing a lot of celebrities been uh embracing you too after the win, man. I seen you were hanging out with Jean-Claude Van Damme, man. I gotta hear about that. Is there anything cool that he taught you that that uh was just helpful? Yeah, we went and we just did karate all day, and I felt like I was in kickboxer, and it was the best <laughs> thing that could ever happen. I grew up on that shit. I like yeah. kickboxing, you know what I'm saying? Uh, not not the sport, but like the, the movie, movie yeah, or like yeah. blood sport kickboxer. Mm -hmm. That was that that was the That's type of shit that one. just uh, I like I like them all. Double impact, Lionheart. Oh, yeah. I love the dude, quest. Yeah, uh, dude, fire. they were all just so, so everything. Street Fighter. <laughs> <laughs> I like, dude. I like lived the ninja movie until I started being a ninja for real. <laughs> yeah, you always. I always had a vivid. I always had a, a vivid imagination about this type of thing too. I remember being with my brother and sister. We're little kids at home and the you know how it was like you like fucking we're home uh, home alone we're just little kids and we like see a car drive by we're like man what if they fucking try to kidnap us like, fucking wow John climb this tree jump yeah. kick this motherfucker they be in the in wrong just fucking like house. in the, just like in the movies you know what I'm saying but we're like little kids little eight seven nine twelve mm -hmm. year old and we're yeah, just yeah. thinking like if this happened this would happen like who thinks like that right? <laughs> we did we just watched ninja movies that was the coolest thing Ninja Turtles Street Fighter mm -hmm. fucking video games fight fight movies. Yeah. Yep, you fuck with like Jackie Chan movies. Yeah, yeah, a little <laughs> bit. Uh, and Bruce Lee was a little ahead of my time. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Bruce Lee's the the shit and and great and everything. But like Van Damme was a big part of my era, like my Man. years. You guys keep in touch a lot. You guys. Uh, sometimes well, he'll he'll hit me up every now and then. He'll go, That's "Hey, what's up. Nathan, this is John Claude Van Damme. He's <laughs> he's cool, man. <laughs> he's hilarious too. He uh he uh." <laughs> yeah, okay. But okay. he's down. He's he, he's he's a writer. Hey, we can't just keep that between us. He took us he takes out he don't drink and stuff, so he'll be okay. like uh we were at his house in in hell in uh, LA, me and my brother, and he was like, Hey, let's go to Barry's. It was like this uh cafe, mm -hmm. restaurant mm -hmm. and bar and we just go there at like one in the morning, we'd we'd hang out and do karate at his house and, and train a little bit. 
And he's he's like for real. He's got a big old house on the hill, Damn. backyard, and like dot dude, and a maid coming out bringing his teas Fucking and Van Damme, bro. <laughs> dude, it's crazy. I was like, are you kidding me? This is this for real? That's fucking wild, man. I seen Mike Tyson. That was a Tyson movie too. itself. Yeah, I, I bet. Mean, what his life is a damn movie, man. I seen Mike Tyson also embracing you on Twitter and stuff. Did you ever get to run into him and meet him? Hey, funny thing about him is I met I met him like eight years ago with my boy Rudy and oh, my really? brother. We 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 were that was a crazy story, dude. <laughs> we were out there in Vegas for a fight. Nick was fighting. Or somebody was fighting, me or him. I think I think we had just got done fighting. We were there for a couple extra days, mm-hmm. right? And uh, uh, it was like back back a long time ago too. Before he was all like mm-hmm. chill. I don't even want to spread rumors about what 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 was happening. But we went and met <laughs> up with him and hung out with him at the Palms. Mm-hmm. They they had a suite there and stuff. And uh, it was like the Paris Hilton suite. Okay. They're like, hey, hey, my. So we went to get some chronic from this dude, right? That was my that was my homeboy's uh, neighbor at his apartment. Who lived there, and we're like, we need some weed. And he's like, he's like, oh, my homie, my homeboy, mm-hmm. uh, he lives up the run, the, or he lives next door. He he got it, so he shot him a text, and he's like, he's like, hey man, I'm at the palms right now, I'm chilling here with Mike Tyson. I can't leave. He's like, come over here, <laughs> come over here, and I'll, I'll drop you some 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 weed. And we're like, all right, cool. And Nick had fought Frank Shamrock, mm-hmm. and then um, and we went over there, and um. And he's like, oh yeah, he saw Nick fight Frank. He 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 said, bring him up. Let's let me meet Nick. Hell yeah. So we're like, all right, cool. <laughs> we're kind of like, what? Mike Tyson's there. I was young. I was probably yeah, twenty one. I, I was so I was like twelve years ago. Fuck. I was I was just a kid, and I was like, really? He's up there? And he's like, yeah, come <laughs> on. Tyson, and he's like, bro. and he's all juiced up up there partying and shit. Uh, the dude who <laughs> we were getting the weed from. He's, yeah. like, he's like, come on, come on up. And we're like, we're like, all right, let's go. And so we went up. We went up there, and we got some 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 uh, weed, and we're rolling the we're rolling it up. And uh, he had a bunch of people in there, and slowly but surely, they started eating. Out. But I guess they had went there mm-hmm. and got a room, but they were all sold out of rooms that night, except for the Paris Hilton suite, I think. So of we went course. up there, and it was just Barbies and pink <laughs> shit everywhere, and they were like <laughs> laughing, like "Look at this pink ass room." <laughs> Mike Tyson in there chilling. We're in there chilling. So we go in there, and we didn't even like. Like and then I didn't even drink at all either. So we were just in there smoking and shit. And we we go we go in there and then he started fucking talking to Nick over in the corner in Nick's ear and they're just going off talking about whatever. Mm. And I was like, man, I wonder what they're talking about over there. So so we're sitting there rolling weed and chilling. And then all of a sudden, everybody ends up because we're there for how long smoking and everybody ends up leaving. And this dude just like Mike's just telling us stories about this and wow. that and this for like three hours. Wow. Just talking about all kinds of stuff. I was like, he had a little towel, he's dapping his head, he's sweating, <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, woo, woo. And I was like, and it was all interesting, cool I shit, bet. right? I and bet. I'm just like, Crazy damn. Life. And uh, so I went home, I went home, and we're like, wow, that was a crazy weekend. And uh, we went home, and I turned on the, uh, the uh, I turned on the internet, and I was looking at Mike Tyson stuff, and he had just came out with that documentary. Mm-hmm. That that old one, the the uh, with the with the birds, mm-hmm. and he's yeah, like yeah, real yeah, heavy yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. He's bigger than now. He's like a vegan and all all good and stuff. And um, this was a long time ago, so he was like, it, that was like brand new. And it, and he came on and like most of that documentary, like he just spit all that you shit to his live. I was like, wow, wow, that's he just crazy. spit like three hours of that shit. And I was like, wow, Damn. that's so crazy. After that, I already liked Mike Tyson. But he became my favorite. My he's, like, he's the best, man. He's you're the, the best. shit. That was that was a crazy. That's crazy, dude. I love crazy. Mike Tyson. We got to get him on the show sometime, man. I think we're gonna take this time. We're gonna take a couple of uh, social media questions from uh, Instagram and Twitter. Um, the first one comes from, I believe it's the Con Reca from Instagram. He asks, Nate, what are your thoughts on CBD usage for post fight recovery? Or better yet, overall pain management as opposed to opioids. In I already said that. I already said that. That's what I said after the thing. Then I had like it's for uh, it's for uh, uh, inflammation and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. CBD is the way to go. 
That's what's up. That's what's up. I was smoking Granddaddy Purple when I been there. Don't tell nobody else. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to keep it between us, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. Ask him if he's on my live feed. Yeah, we're going to hit that fool on Instagram. Do you see my live feed? (laughs) No. That's what's up. Well, the next question comes from Cannon Fodder93 on Instagram. He asks If you and your brother were in a two on two fight against. Conor McGregor and Anderson Silva. It don't matter. Do you think you guys Anybody. would win? Anybody. Anybody in the world. <laughs> hey, I'd love to see that damn fight. <laughs> What'd you say? Two on two? Yeah, you, you and match? Nick versus Conor and Anderson Silva. Hey, with me and Nick, with Nick with me, unstoppable against anybody. I believe that. Bring a dude. tank. I believe that. If I got Nick, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's like some that's a crazy team right there, man. Cool. Well, the last question comes from the boy Benefit. If y'all remember on when the Napster days came out, one of the biggest viral rappers, Benefit, he actually left a comment and has a question for Nate. His question is, uh, what are your top five Tupac songs? Oh wow. <laughs> I they're they're always changing, so let me just give me let me give it. Yeah, just break it down. Dude, they're always changing. Uh, right now, I like Holla at Me. Mm-hmm. That one's a, a good one. Uh, Why You Turn On Me. Until the End of Time. Mm-hmm. That's a real good song. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always like Two of America's Most Wanted. Put of together course. a million march with some gangs. <laughs> Shit. Uh, what do we got? One left? I'm I think gonna, I lost count. I'm just going to give, uh, say last one to left because that's all I can think of right now. There you go. go. That's what's up. That's that's the social media questions. Remember to watch for my posts. They all came from Instagram and Twitter. Uh, this this hey, uh, check episode. out check out on 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 YouTube Street Life with Snoop Dogg and Tupac. That song's tight. There that you song's go. Real there tight. you go. That's a homework assignment for y'all at home. That's the end of the social media questions. Um, real quick, man. Does you know? With all this like fight stuff, I know there's a lot of stupid ass people out there, man. Does anybody ever try to just, like, I don't know, try to test you in person when they see you in person? Anybody a lot, ever a met- lot when I was when I started. Mm-hmm. A lot when I was younger. Yeah. But now I think with so many years of experience, I can see it coming before it comes. Yeah, people know. You know, I'm like this guy's gonna try to. He's the type of person. Yeah. Huh. Uh, you you can tell. You can feel their energy, and they could just walk in the room over there. I can see him like that guy. Is either gonna say what's up or he's gonna be. In. Asshole. Hmm. So I'm gonna go get him. I go up to him. I'm like, "What's up, man? <laughs> we gonna talk about this. You cool? So be cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, not to big be cool or anything, but I be like, just like, yeah, I, don't get I'm fucked like, up. I know you're not <laughs> not even like that though. I'm like, <laughs> I know when people are just like, yeah, yeah. fuck this guy, haters. You know, and yeah, I'm like, yeah. let's talk before you start your hate, and we'll change their mind about that. Hmm. We'll be friends before we're enemies. That's what's up. Well, hey, what what uh, all styles of martial arts have you studied? Uh, when I was a kid, I did uh, Aikido. Uh, my uncle had an Aikido studio in Stockton, oh, okay. and uh, so we were real little. Me and my brother and sister did that, and then uh, we got into karate out here uh, in Lodi a little bit. A couple different karate schools I went to, and then when I was about fifteen, Nick Nick was already. When I was about fourteen, Nick started training. Jiu-Jitsu, and we were white. He was renting that Blockbuster. Remember Blockbuster? Mm-hmm. Remember Blockbuster? Mm-hmm. You don't got Blockbuster no more. Nope. And uh, we'd go to Blockbuster, and uh, he would rent all the UFCs, and we'd watch them all. And we all like, old ones, yeah, like Dan Tank Abbott, Dan Tank Abbott, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Hoist Gracie, yeah. they were done some weird matches at that uh, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but we we're like, that's the man. Hoist Gracie was the baddest dude on earth. Yeah, for real. How did you guys link up with the Gracies? Because that's big that to to learn from them. Like that's that's pretty yeah. serious honor, man. I'm sure they don't just train anybody. So my brother watched all the tapes. There was a gym in Lodi called the Animal House Gym, mm-hmm. and it was like. Had mats in the back and a, a, a MMA class, a mm-hmm. jiu-jitsu class. Mm-hmm. And uh, he would go in there. Oh, he already was like done with, he was like, I ain't going to school no more. He was like 15 years old. <laughs> and he was in there. He got my mom to sign him up. He was in there all day lifting weights. Nick, if you see old pictures of Nick, he was yoked out, too. <laughs> he used to lift a lot of weights and go in there and work out all day and wait for uh, MMA class. I don't know if it was MMA or jiu-jitsu class. And there was a guy in there named Steve Heed. And he was training for fights. Happy birthday, Steve Heath. Mm. It's his birthday right Happy now. birthday. Uh, and Steve Heath was in there training and, and fighting. And Nick was like, 
dude, this guy's the shit. He he knows that. He knows all this. Uh, and Frank Sham, it was mm. it was Frank. He's from out here. It too, was yeah. Ken Shamrock's dad's gym. The mm. gym was called Shamrock Two Thousand. Because he's from Lockford. So yeah. Really so it was, it, they were already fun to see and off doing their thing. But his dad owned the gym here. It was called Shamrock Two Thousand. Mm. And this was like like in two thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, before that even, I think. But it was like. <clears throat> It was like 2000 was coming in, and uh, Nick Nick started training with him, and and was like, dude, this guy's a man, this guy's a shit, and this guy had hell MMA fights, Steve yeah, Heath, yeah. and uh, he he started training with him, and Steve Heath was fighting everybody. He fought Chuck Liddell, and yep. Nick helped him train for the Chuck Liddell fight because Nick was the most down one to train. Yeah. He was like the youngest one, and he was working out all the time. That's what's up. Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, that's that's so the guy so the guy was he was training with him and they were partners mm-hmm. and then he's like and Nick was always talking about hoist he's like look hoist and then Steve's like hey you know I'm a blue belt in that with a gi on yeah and he's like he's like, he's like under who he's like Caesar Gracie he's like who the hell Caesar Gracie he's <laughs> like he's like it's his cousin Nick's like that fool's got cousins there he's like yeah he's yeah in they a, got he's lots in of the, family he's yeah. like he's in the bay I'll take you over there Nick's like let's go tomorrow so Nick made him take him out there Nick Nick stayed. Going there, he'd, he'd always go to train in Lodi Animal House, and he'd have people drive him to. Uh, hmm. He'd have people drive him to uh, to Caesar, so he started training the gi, and he got a, he got a blue belt, and then right about then I started training. That's what's up. Well, I know you and your brother is like super into the health thing, man. Um, you you guys are vegans, right? You guys. Yeah, vegan. I I ate a little seafood. I, I I go on and off. I was a like a complete vegan for like eight years. Oh wow. But um, I'll, I'll dabble into some seafood, and now that I would dabble into seafood every now and then, mm-hmm. but uh, now I now I just I do fish and stuff. So that's what's up. Like for someone like trying to go vegan or something, like what's some like good food that you would like recommend them, man? Like what's like a good like substitute for something? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, I would uh don't, never recommend tofu. Everybody does that tofu thing, but that's whack. <laughs> tofu is not good for you. Fuck it's, tofu. Yeah, they make tofu and shit. That's a bitch ass <laughs> anyway. Why, why would you even want to eat something called that? <laughs> I <Tofu>. agree. <laughs> and everyone's like, I'll take that tofu. That's that sounds up. weak. Huh? But that shit actually it lowers your testosterone. It makes you. Bitch made. So you don't tofu. Need that. You heard it first. Yeah. Tofu makes you bitch, bitch made. made. There you go. Don't we need forget. to make a shirt. Huh? Don't forget. That's a great fucking quote right <laughs> there, man. That's like one of those Facebook inspirational quotes. You know what yeah. I mean? It was just a picture of you and just says, Tofu makes you bitch made. I think that would be <laughs> But hilarious. you can go to the taco trucks around here too, just didn't order a veggie <laughs> plate or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. There's food they eat everywhere. I'm trying to get a whole food out here, dude. They don't they don't have no whole food out here. Everywhere I go in the world, I go to fight places, right? Mm-hmm. And I get off a plane. If I'm fighting with my partners are, are are fighting, we get off the plane and I immediately look up a 24 hour fitness and a Whole Foods. I'm like, all right, got we you go locked for in. Whole Foods. Yeah, never. That's smart. That's smart, man. That's smart. Well, I know you guys are super conditioned too, man. Like, what's a typical like daily workout for you consist of? Like, what like you know what I mean? What kinds of things like weight training, cardio? Like, what kinds of things? Yeah, do do? it changes around. Like today, I got up and I rode my bike. I did about 15 to 20 miles on my bike. <laughs> and then I was in the train tonight. They're all training right now. I'll probably leave here and go train. That's what's up. And there's jujitsu class. I'll probably miss that, but they'll probably be sparring afterwards or something, maybe, there you go. if anybody's around. And then uh, every day, something different. I swim, I, I bike, I run. I uh, do jujitsu. I'll kick box and I'll box. I'll just go to the boxing gym and uh, hit beats with my coach. There you go. Every day, different something. That's what's up. That's One what's of up. those things happens, yo. <laughs> <laughs> some, some of that nature. Well, that's cool, man. We're reaching the end point of this interview. We're getting close. We got a couple more things to cover before we release you. But one, this is we're reaching the point where we're at something called the Aquis Top Three. Now, every guest gets something different where I ask you what your top three of all time is on one topic based who, on who you are. And for you, Nate Diaz, your top three is, what are your top three fighters of all time in any combat sport? It doesn't matter if it's UFC, boxing, K1, whatever. Like, who are your top three favorite fighters, period? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to say Mike Tyson, mm. Nick Diaz, Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give you four. I'm gonna give Do you Henzo and Hickson and or five. Henzo, Hickson, and Hoist Gracie. There you go. Between those 
Those guys, that's my, those are the best fighters. That's a great fucking list, and man. And then we had the boxing guys, the jiu-jitsu guys, and the best uh, mixed martial arts. Yeah, you got a little bit of everything. Ever. That's a great list, man. For me, my favorite fighters is Nate Diaz, Nick Diaz, and I got to go with Mike Tyson, too, man. Maybe yeah. maybe even a tie between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. I, I really love Evander Holyfield, man. I also like this other cat that I used to watch on K1 called Remy Bunjowski. I yeah, really yeah, like Bunjowski. that cat a lot. Yeah, yeah. That dude would do some <laughs> wild knees, man. I love You ever met him? No, I never met him. Man, I'm a big fan. He's like from Holland or something like yeah, that, I think. That dude was badass, man. I fucks with him, man. Really? That's what's up. Well, hey, man, um, let the people know where they can find you on social media before we get up out of here. I'm over. I'm on uh, Nate Diaz 209. All one word. On everything. On everything. Follow me as well as Awkwards 209 or Awkwards, O-K-W-E-R-D-Z. That's on everything except Snapchat because I don't really fuck with that. But I'm on everything else, man. Come find us, bro. That's what's up. The last thing we got to do before you get out of here is we got to have you uh, sign this table right here. Cool. You got to get your autograph, man, for show. Yep. And also, while you do that, definitely make sure y'all visit the Represent website and get y'all some of the clothing line. They're doing some fire stuff. We got all this tree. Let me see this tree, Chris. What y'all got over here, man? We got some fire, man. We got some fire, dude. The Diaz group got some fire. Make sure you go get everything that they fucking with. And, uh... You know, I believe that is it, man. So for everybody, I appreciate y'all watching Outside the Box. Bah! Now let's go smoke.